Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be covering how to make a berry bush. Uh, now this has been requested a few times and I finally got around to it. Uh, now there is some mechanics that still needs to be added to basically be figured out. So it's not fully completed but the growth and you know general mechanics of the growth and actual getting stuck in it is operational but uh, there is still some work that I'll have to create an update video for this particular uh, tutorial. Now before I get started there will be a link in the description of the video for the actual workspace and files for this particular workspace. Uh, for example the procedures, workspace, uh, the as well as the uh, resources for the textures and procedures and stuff like that. So I'll make sure to include that for my Google Drive uh, so you guys can get the procedures and everything directly. Now, before we get started, uh, we need one food item and four block states. So when you have that, uh, we'll, I will show you how to create all that. Uh, we're gonna right click on this and it should grow every five seconds. Now you can change the time as you want. Uh, the longer you want for a seconds to grow, then you can set that. Now the first state or the third stage, you can right click on it and it will give you one single berry. Now if we basically let it grow up and go to the fourth stage, it will give us anywhere from one to uh, three berries. So in that case, we got three berries from it. If we walk through it, it slows us down because we're technical going through a cobweb. Now the damage I can't get figured out at the moment, so I'll make an update video on that. Uh, this is also a food item, so if we were hungry, we could actually eat it and we would basically regenerate some food as well. And if we want to place it, we'll just right click on it and place down, it would basically place down the item itself or the block itself. So let's go into mCrater and I'll show you how it all works. So we're going to focus on setting up the block states first. Uh, one of the things that you're going to need is basically once you got one of the blocks uh, states all set up, you basically run that through all the other block states and just duplicate it. So we'll cover the resources that we need first. We're going to need four different uh, textures for your blocks and you're going to need one item texture for your food item. Uh, when you have that set up, I have included the actual cross models with the proper block um, icons and stuff like that for 3D. So when you have that, you can import each individual one and you can set your stage one for your stage one a texture, stage two for your stage and so on. So when you have that uh, imported, what you want to do is go back to your resources and create a block, which you can create a block right here and I'll cover the settings through the first uh, stage right here. So when you have that set up, what you wanna do is set your, uh, your first stage, which is zero, Blackberry stage zero, or whatever stage you want it. It needs to be on cutout and it needs to be a transparent part. Your particles will be on this side right here, so make sure that's checked uh, for whatever stage that you're working on. Uh, now these are the only things that you're going to need to update for each stage and the procedures. So moving on to properties, make sure that you give it a GUI name, you set the material under plants, you make sure that it's not going to be found in the creative inventory by setting the not in creative tab in ent entity entry, pardon me, and uh, block sound should be plant, the hardness and resistance should be zero and your, you should check the can walk through the block and make sure that's enabled. Next thing you need to do is make sure the drop amount is set to zero and move on to advanced properties. So I highly suggest setting this to 20 because there is 20 ticks in a second. So you'll be able to measure how many seconds you basically want the plant to grow if you set this to 20 and it'll be less work to figure out. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is set the block color on map to foliage and then you want to set the block flammability to 60. Uh, this basically keeps all the same settings as a regular berry bush. Moving on to tile entity, you need to enable this, uh, not because it has an inventory, but because we're going to be using MBT tags. So make sure to check this, set the inventory to zero and disable both of these blocks. Moving on to triggers, we'll get into that in a little bit but first compile that 
and duplicate this uh, basically four, uh, three extra times. So you need stage one, stage two, and stage three, which the first stage is actually stage zero. So those are basically how that's all set up. Uh, the only thing after you duplicate it, you need to update the particle block here and set your new stage model down here. The rest uh, will be perfectly fine to leave alone. So when you have that all sorted out, what we can do is start working on the actual procedures for the first two stages. So if we go to triggers and then go to update tick, we'll start with the update tick now that we have the actual blocks in place. So when we have that all sorted out, what we need to do is create a timer and we go to block properties or pro pardon me, procedures, scroll down until we get a dark MBT number tag. And we're going to just call, uh, in, we're going to call this, uh, tag, uh, our mod name. So we're just going to call it Northwest trees gaming growth timer. And the reason why we put the prefix, for our mod uh, before it is so it basically is specific to our mod only and it doesn't have any conflict issues. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need is to go to math and grab a math operator. We're going to drag that zero over. We're going to set this to one. And then what we need to do is go back to block procedures and we're going to grab a get MBT tag for the dark blue. And we're going to copy this growth timer and we're going to place it right into the get part. And then we're going to put that into our set um, tag number. And what this will do is it will increase it every time the tick uh, rate for the block has increased by one uh, or every 20 ticks. So every 20 ticks, it will update the MBT uh, tag for the particular block to plus one. Now what we need to do is we need to go and grab the actual data for to test how many seconds we want it to grow. So we're going to do that right now. So let's uh, grab a if statement. We can do that from flow control. We'll grab the if statement. I already did that. And then what we need to do is go to logic, grab a dark blue operator, and then we're going to set equal to or greater than, and then we're going to grab a number. So go to math and then grab a number. And this is going to be measured in how many seconds if you use the ticks for the block to, as 20. So in my set, in my case, I used five. So every five seconds, it updates the, basically the actual model or the block to the next stage. Uh, next, we need to get the actual MBT tags. We're going to duplicate that, that we created earlier. And now that we have that all set up, we need to grab another if statement. We're going to choose the third one down. And then we're going to select a the gear icon, which will expand uh, the a new window. And we're going to drag that onto the else if statement below. Now that we have that all set up, we can go to block procedures, and we can scroll down until we get block at, and then the coordinates. And then what we need to do is we need to go to our logic, grab a yellow operator, and then we're going to drop that in our first slot. And then what we need to do is go back to Minecraft components and we're going to grab the yellow operator to select our block. Now, before we select our block, block we're going to duplicate this three times, or pardon me, two times. And then we're going to select our first stage or stage zero. And then we're going to select stage one. And then we're going to select stage three, or pardon me, stage two. And then what we need to do is we're going to replace the item or replace the blocks. So we need to go back to block procedures, replace block at with, and then the type of block and then the state and uh, keep MBT data. So before we do that, we're gonna to need to make sure that we duplicate this three times. But before we do that, make sure that keep MBT slash inventory is unchecked. That's important because if uh, it is checked, then the timer will carry over to the next block. So we're gonna duplicate that three times. Now the first one should be our stage two or pardon me, stage one. And then the, the second one below that should be stage two. And the one below that should be stage three, our final stage. So congratulations, you've made the update tick. Now we can move on to some other procedures. So I'm just gonna delete that. And then we're gonna move that up to here. 
and save that. So when you have that all set up, make sure that all your um, all your blocks uh, stages have this particular update tick, so it updates constantly. Basically allowing it to have the update tick will allow it to grow over time. So the next thing that we have is for all our blocks is when entity collides in the block. So we're going to click on that and we're going to set in cobweb for one tick for the entity. So we need to go to entity procedures. And then if you scroll down a little bit, there should be uh, one that says uh, that particular block. So it should be somewhere in here, I think, is it under entity or yeah, right here. So set uh, event slash target entity in cobweb for one tick. And then you'll just drag that onto your main procedure and that's all it. So save that and then make sure that all your blocks have these two particular procedures linked to it. Uh, you don't need to create the individual individual procedures. They're set up in a way that they'll run um, just from one procedure. So you can just link the same procedure to each individual block state. So do that for your stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. And then what we're going to need to do is create a, a food item. So we're going to go to food and you can grab a food item right uh, here and you're going to create a food item. So grab your food texture, set your properties however you want it to be and uh, make sure that it has no particular, well you could have particular um, procedures but uh, we're not going to be actually using procedures for from the actual food item to basically place the plant itself when you've created your food item what you need to do is set up the planting properties so what we're going to do is create a new procedure uh, we're going to go down and select procedure and then what we're going to do is open up the procedure and go uh, for the global variable we're going to scroll down and we're going to find player right clicks on block and we're going to select the global trigger for that Next, what we need to do is test for the food item in the player's hand. So we're going to go to if statement or flow control, grab a if statement. And then what we need to do is go to logic, grab a light blue operator, uh, set this to and, go to external inputs, and then we're gonna duplicate this. And then we're going to set this to or as well. You can do that by clicking on the actual uh, equal sign uh, by starting with, and then you can change the type of operation that it basically does. So with that, uh, we need to go to logic, grab a red operator, and go back to logic and grab a yellow operator. Uh, next, we need to go to Minecraft components and grab a yellow block, and go back to Minecraft components and grab a red block. Uh, now, before we go any further, what we need to do is go to anti -per entity procedures and scroll down to item in main hand of event slash target entity and we're going to place that down right here we're going to select our item that we're basically holding is our food item and then for the block what we need to do is we need to get block so we're going to go to block procedures scroll down to the bottom get block at and then we'll be able to continue this in just a sec so we actually need to test for the block above the block that we're actually clicking on uh, to test if it's error or cave error. So to do that, we need to go to math operators, grab a math operator, drag and drop the Y onto the math operator. So Y plus, and then we need to test for the block above. So we're gonna do that by pressing Y plus one, and we're gonna place that down there. Now, before we select our block, we're gonna duplicate this one time, and then we're gonna place that down in the other um, condition. So the first one should be testing if it's error. The one below it should be testing if it's cave error. Now that part's out of the way, what we can do is we can place the block itself. So we're going to go to block procedures, place block, and then we're gonna select our first stage. Uh, so stage zero, and we're gonna place that down in here. And then we can delete our Y axis or Y coordinate. And then we're gonna duplicate the one that we just created. And we're gonna place that right in there. Uh, next, what we need to do is remove a item from the player's main inventory. So we're going to scroll down until we remove one and then the item that we want from event slash target entity main inventory. So we're going to plop that down here. We're going to delete the block that we want to select and we're going to 
uh, duplicate our item in main hand and then we're going to just plop that like that and that's how it all is set up so you can basically uh, what it's doing is it's testing for the item in the entity's main hand it needs to be equal to the food item if that's true then we're testing for when the block is right clicked on if it's a the block above is air or cave air if that's also true then we're going to be placing the block for the first stage one block above and we're going to remove the entity's main hand for one of them. So you can basically drag that onto your main procedure and carry on. The uh, next part is a little bit trickier. So we're going to go to our last two stages and we need to make a procedure for the right click event for those two stages. So stage two and stage three. So we're gonna do this on stage two and we're going to go to triggers and then what we're going to do is create a on block right clicked and then we're going to just edit this one because um, I already have it made but you can create it and then what you want to do is create a procedure like this now what it's doing is it's going to test for the block state and we're doing that by getting the block the type of block and then what we're doing is running it on the server side and then we're basically used a local variable I'll get into how to create that in just a second and we're setting that to a random number and then we're testing for the local variable and then we're testing for a value and then we're repeating to spawn the gem three times for the if it's equal to or greater than 0 0.66 if it's equal to or is greater than 0 0.33 on the other condition then it's going to spawn two and if it's not either of those, if it's less than 0 0.33, then it's going to only spawn one item. It's also going to play a uh, sound for item dot sweet underscore berry dot pick underscore from underscore bush. Now that's pretty hard to actually find. It's towards the bottom. I'm not going to be bothering to actually go and find that two times in a row. It was It's really hard and disorganized in the sound selection and there's no way to actually search for things that you're looking for which is unfortunate um, not in AMP Creator at least uh, in the future a third-party program might be able to implement that particularly after that we're basically replacing the block to our uh, first stage which is our our first stage which is the the one that we planted with so make sure well, I'll cover how all that works. Uh, the other condition is just spawning the gem and then we are playing the sound and then we're replacing the block as well. So let's get to creating this. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a if statement. So we're going to go to flow control. We're going to grab our third option. Uh, this will make it easier for basically testing for our two conditions, for our two states, for the the ones that actually have berries. So when we have that, we need to go to our logic and grab a yellow operator. And then what we're going to do is go to block procedures, scroll down, get block at, and then we're just gonna drop that in there. We're going to go to Minecraft components and then we're going to place down a item select or block selector. And then we're going to duplicate that two times. Now the first one right up here should be our final stage, stage three. And we're gonna select that and place that in to our block selector right there. The second one should be our second stage our second stage. So like that. And then what we need to do is we need to set a local variable. Now if you're not familiar how local variables work, uh, you can go over to this side right here. It says local variables. You can click the plus green icon. You're going to need to set the variable type to number, give it a name, and click OK. So we have one called random number. And before we get started, we need to actually run this on server side. So we're going to do that by going to world data and scrolling down to the bottom where it says is provided world remote at client side. We're going to grab that block. We're going to go to logic. We're going to grab a not statement. We're going to drop that onto that particular block. And then we need a procedure uh, if statement. So we're going to go to flow control, add a if statement, and we're going to drop that right onto that block right there. 
when we have that all set up, what we can do is we can go to custom variables and variable, and then we're going to put the set variable rate in the actual not is provided on remote client side. So this is running on the server side. We're going to be testing, assigning the a random number to the variable itself. So we're going to go to math and then we're going to set the variable to random. And then what we can do is go to our flow control again. We'll grab our third block here. We'll drop that in. We're going to click the gear icon and put a else statement under it. So we have two conditions and one else statement. Now when we have that all set up, what we need to do is go to logic, grab a dark blue operator, and place that down, and then we're going to go equal to or greater than, and then what we need to do is set a number, and we're going to set this, because there's three different options, we're going to go 0 0.66. Now what that does is it gives it a one third percent chance, and then what we're going to do is go and grab our custom variables, get variable and we're going to place our local variable right here. So we're going to duplicate that and then we're going to set this to equal to or greater than 0 0.33. And then anything that isn't or less than 0 0.33 will be run under the else statement. So now that we have that all set up, we need to create a couple of randomizers or repeaters. So we need to go to flow control, grab a repeater, and then we're going to plop that down in here. And then we're going to go to math, we're going to grab a number, and then we're going to place that here. The first one should be 3, the second one should be 2, and then we're, what we're going to do is grab a spawn gem under world management, spawn gem, the type of item, and then our coordinates. So what we need to do from there is we need to uh, basically go and grab a math operator, drop that down here. We're going to grab a number and then we're going to set this to 0 0.05 and we're going to duplicate this two times. Then what we're going to do is copy our X or place our X, Y and Z down. Now what this will do is it will off or center the actual item drop to the center of the block that we're basically right clicking on. So we're going to do that and place it in the same order. Now we're going to select our food item for this particular gem and we're going to place this in our repeaters and our else statement. So it's like so. As you can see up here, exactly the same thing. So the next thing that we need to do is go to world management, play sound, and I just plop that there, whoops. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to place that after that else statement that or the if statement that we just basically created. Now you want to scroll down and find the the sound that says item dot sweet underscore berries dot pick underscore from underscore bush. Now that is towards the bottom of the per the bottom of the list. Uh, it took me a while to figure it because there is no way to actually find any sounds by searching or anything like that so you're just gonna have to search for it and uh, find it or you could just import the procedure itself and configure it how you want to uh, I'm not gonna bother with that but you can basically I'll just use this as a guideline to what you actually need to do for that particular thing you want to duplicate that sound two times though and you're gonna put that under your second operation as well as you're going to want to duplicate your spawn jam and place that right at the top play your sound and your sound should be played after this if statement as well. Next, what we need to do is replace the block. So we're gonna grab a, go to block procedures, replace block, and we're gonna drop that right after the sound. And then we're gonna select our stage zero and make sure that it does not have keep mbt slash inventory and make sure that's unchecked. And then we're gonna duplicate that two times and then we're going to put that on our other operation as well. So that's basically how you create that particular procedure. Now what that needs to be done is you need to go and make sure that both your stages for stage two and stage three, the final stage, have the 
uh, on block right clicked and make sure that they have this procedure. Outside of that, that's all there is to it. Uh, you don't need to worry about anything else. All the things that I basically covered is right there. So again, your block stages are these ones here. Your right click on block, your right click on block needs to be for your last two stages and the update tick and the when player entity collides with the block needs to be on all four stages as well as the player planting food needs to be set under a global trigger for your own uh, when you right click with the item. Uh, outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.